Hi everyone, welcome to Smart Math Online Tutor. Through this video, I'm going to tell you about equations and formulae. To get started, first of all, let us see what is an equation. All of you know what are algebraic expressions. The difference between equations and algebraic expressions is that equations has an equal sign along with numbers, unknown terms and mathematical operations. Look at these examples. You see unknown terms like x, y and p. At the same time, you see operations or mathematical operations like addition, subtraction and multiplication along with numbers. Now let us see how to construct a simple equation. Look at this statement. Raju has X mangoes and he bought another 4 mangoes. Now he has 16 mangoes and we are going to express this information using an equation. So first of all, let us write down some statements related to this example. First, let me write the number of mangoes Raju has. It is X. And then I am going to write the number of mangoes Raju bought is equal to 4. Now, if you take the total number of mangoes Raju has, I can write it as X plus 4. Now, in the statement, it is already given. Now, he has 16 mangoes. So, what we have to do is to equate this X plus 4 to 16 and make an equation. So, here we go. This is the answer for this statement. Moving on to another example, the price of a book is reduced by 4 rupees. The new price of this book is 30 rupees and we are going to express this by an equation. Once again, now if you see carefully here, there is no unknown term mentioned. So, let us take the price of the book to be y rupees and then let us write the new price of the book like this. It is reduced by 4 rupees, so the new price will be y minus 4. And then in the statement, they tell this new price is equal to 30 rupees. So, I can write my equation as y minus 4 is equal to 30. And that is the answer. Let's move on to another example. A basket of eggs has x number of eggs and the number of eggs in 6 such baskets is equal to 220 eggs. Now, we are going to express this by an equation. First of all, let us write down the number of eggs in one basket. That is equal to x. And then let us write down the number of eggs in six baskets. You multiply x by six, so it becomes 6x. Now, in six baskets, they say there are 220 eggs. Therefore, I can write down 6x is equal to 220. So, this is the equation related to this statement. In the next part, we are going to see how to solve a simple equation. Now, first of all, you should know that solving a simple equation means finding the value of the unknown term, which satisfies the equation. This is also called the solution of the equation. And since this is a simple equation, remember, simple equations has only one solution. And the next thing is, to know or to simplify a uh, equation, you should know the opposite operations of basic mathematical operations. That is, now if you take addition, the opposite of addition is subtraction and opposite of subtraction is addition. Then opposite of multiplication is division and that of division is multiplication. So you should have a clear idea about opposite operations of basic mathematical operations when you simplify or solve simple equations. So, let us move on to some examples. Solving simple equations can be done in two ways. The first method I am going to teach you is the algebraic method. So, look at this example. A plus 6 is equal to 10. Now, we are going to find out a value suiting A so that this equation is true. That is, if you add 6 to A, the answer will be 10. So, to this, first of all, we have to isolate A. That means we have to keep A alone. To make A alone, if you see carefully, A is with plus 6. So, we have to remove this plus 6. To remove this plus 6, what should you do is 
to do the opposite operation of plus 6. You know opposite of plus 6 is minus 6. So what we do is we put minus 6 to both the sides of the equation like this. Remember it is very important to do whatever the operation you do to either sides of the equation. Otherwise the validity of the equation will collapse. So once when you do this plus 6 and minus 6 will cancel off and a will remain in that side. On the other side 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. So our answer will be a is equal to 4 and it's written like this. This can be simply done in another way or the very uh, uh, a small step can be adjusted like this. Remember a is with plus 6 so we have to get rid of plus 6. We can take this plus 6 to the other side of the equal sign. When you take any number to the other side of the equal sign its operation changes. That means now if it is plus 6 here when it goes to the other side it becomes minus 6. So then a is alone in this side. 10 minus 6 again the answer is a is equal to 4. Whatever the method you follow always the answer will be the same answer will not change. Now uh, you can see or double check whether your answer is correct by putting this a is equal to 4 in your equation. Now instead of a you put 4 then 4 plus 6 is equal to 10 then that tells your answer is correct. So you yourself can double check and find out whether your answer is correct. Moving on to the second example that is b minus 5 is equal to 19. So in this case b is with minus 5 opposite of minus 5 will be plus 5. So we put plus 5 to both the sides like this then minus 5 and plus 5 will cancel off and on the other side 19 plus 5 will be there. So b is equal to 19 plus 5 is 24. If you do in on the, the other method take minus 5 to the other side then when it goes to the other side it becomes plus 5. So b is equal to 19 plus 5 that is 24. Now you can put 24 instead of b in your equation. If b is 24, 24 minus 5 is equal to 19. That tells you your answer is correct. Let's move on to the next example. The third example is 5p equals to 35. Now if you see here 5p means 5 into p or 5 multiplied by p is equal to 35. Now to find out the opposite operation between 5 and p that is division. Opposite of multiplication is division as you know. So we divide both the sides by 5 in order to cancel off 5. Then you get the answer as p is equal to 7 because 35 divided by 5 is 7. Now in our next or the other method if you take 5 to the other side 5 is with multiplication when it goes to the other side it becomes division like this and therefore again we are getting the same answer p is equal to 7. Now let's substitute or let's put the value of p there in the equation and see whether our answer is correct. If p is 7 5 into p means 5 into 7 that is equal to 35 so that says our answer is correct. Next example 3y minus 2 is equal to 13. Now what we do here first. First of all we have to get rid of this 2. Remember if there are two operations like this. First of all you have to get rid of either addition or subtraction. Then you have to move on to multiplication or division. So to get rid of this minus sign here or minus 2 here. What we have to do is we have to add 2 to both the sides. So it will become like this. You add 2 to both the sides in order to cancel minus 2 there. Then you will get 3y is equal to 13 plus 2 that is 15. Now we do the division part because 3y is uh, multiplied 3 into y. So we divide both the sides by 3 like this. And then you will get the answer of y. y is equal to 5. And uh, if you do in the simple steps, you take minus 2 to the other side, it becomes plus 2. So 3y is equal to 13 plus 2. So that is 15. 3y is equal to 15. Take 3 to the other side. When it goes to the other side, it becomes division. y is equal to 15 divided by 3 and that is 5. Here again, you can put 5 instead of y and see whether your answer is correct. See now, 3 into y is 3y. So 3 into 5 is 15. 15 minus 2 is 13. So this value satisfies the equation and that tells 
your answer is correct now let's move on to the next part of this lesson that is how to solve equations in another method this method is using flow diagrams let us see how to do that 3x plus 7 is equal to 13 now first of all you have to understand what has happened in this equation x is multiplied by 3 and 7 is added so the answer is 13 now we draw a flow diagram in order to represent this details or the data first of all you draw a box like this and put the unknown term that's right my unknown term is x in this case so i put x and draw a box like this now what has happened to x is it is it has become 3x that is multiplied by 3 so i put an arrowhead multiply by 3 and write 3x like this then what has happened 7 is added so again i draw an arrowhead put plus 7 over there and then i am getting the equation to be 3x plus 7 now we know from the statement or from the example this is equal to 13 so i put the arrowhead downwards like this and equate it to 13 now when it is equal to 13 and now i'm going to go in the reverse direction when you go in reverse direction whatever the operation you did above must be the opposite when you go back so that is above i have added 7 so when i go in reverse i have to subtract 7 so i subtract 7 13 minus 7 is equal to 6 now the next operation i have to do is above i have done multiply multiplication by 3 so here division by 3 i divide 6 by 3 then my answer becomes 2 so x is equal to 2 in this case if x is equal to 2 you can check your answer again 3 into 2 is 6 6 plus 7 is equal to 13 so our answer is correct let's look into another example so that you will understand better the second example is 2x minus 4 is equal to 6. <clears throat> so here again I draw a box, put x and now what has happened to x is it is multiplied by 2. So I draw an arrowhead like this and put multiplied by 2 and then x has become 2x. Now thereafter in the equation uh, it is uh, minus 4 so I subtract 4 and then my expression becomes 2x minus 4 now this is equal to 6 according to the example so i put 6 in the next box and go in reverse when i go in reverse i have to do all the opposite operations of the previous set of operations so instead of minus 4 i put plus 4 and i go back 6 plus 4 is 10 and instead of multiplication by 2 i put division by 2 on my next arrowhead so the answer for x becomes 5 because 10 divided by 2 is 5. So if x is 5, 2 into 5 is 10, 10 minus 4 is 6. Then it satisfies the equation. Therefore, my answer is correct. So this is how you do the solving of simple equation using flow diagrams. The next part of this lesson is a formula. Formula is a relationship between two or more physical quantities and using the formula we can find out various physical quantities now if you take perimeter area volume speed and so on are used are calculated using a formula for an example if you see uh, uh, the perimeter of a rectangle if you take you know the perimeter of a rectangle will be length plus breadth plus length plus breadth this can be simplified and written like perimeter is equal to 2 times length plus breadth. So, this kind of relationships are called as formulae. This is also a type of equation. The speciality is they have meanings or the unknown terms have meanings in this formulae. So, when you substitute numerical values in a formulae, what you do is instead of the unknown term, you put a number look at this example finding the perimeter of the rectangle now here rectangle is given with a length 5 centimeters and breadth 3 centimeters so we know this is the equation of perimeter for a rectangle so instead of l and b we put 5 and 3 like this mm. now let's simplify uh, first of all you have to simplify the bracket 5 plus 3 is 8 
So 2 into 8 is equal to 16 centimeters. Hope I made myself clear with equations, how to make equations, how to solve equations and about formulae. See you with another smart math tip. Until then, goodbye.